Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. Tonight we're going to be reading out of Job 38, 16. Hast thou entered into the springs of the sea? The whole verse says, you guys know what this is in Job. We did the, I have the Job playlist, did the whole book of Job, and he, God's having a discussion with Job. Um, the whole verse says, have you entered the springs of the sea or have you walked in search of the depths? So let's go up here because there's some interesting insights in this speech that he's giving. Let's see. So we'll just start right here in verse 8. Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst forth and issued from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band? When I fixed my limit for it and set bars and doors? When I said this far you may come but no further. So he's talking about the shoreline. And here your proud waves must stop. Have you commanded the morning since your days began? God paints every sunset and every sunrise every day. Have you commanded the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to know its place, that it might take hold of the ends of the earth and the wicked be shaken out of it? It takes on form like clay under a seal and stands out like a garment. From the wicked their light is withheld and the upraised arm is broken. Have you entered the springs of the sea, or have you walked in search of its depths? You know the Lord sees all those shipwrecks down there. He collected the dead from the Titanic. Have the gates of death been revealed to you in World War II, World War I? Or have you seen the doors of the shadow of death? Have you comprehended the breadth of the earth? Tell me if you know all this. Where is the way to the dwelling of light and darkness? Where is its place? that you may take it to its territory, that you may know the paths to its home. The Lord is talking about a great many spiritual things that we don't understand, but he's speaking about things we know, but in a way we don't know them. Do you know it because you were born then or because the number of your days is great? Have you entered the treasury of snow or have you seen the treasury of hail, which I have reserved for the time of trouble, for the day of battle and war? That's the tribulation. By what way is light diffused? Or the east wind scattered over the earth? See, a lot of the things he's talking about here, we've just now, in the last two generations, just like in the last hundred years, 50 years even, discovered these things. Just now. Science knew none of this. Now we're just, just barely starting to touch on it. Some things in nature must remain a mystery to the most intelligent and enterprising investigators. Like, what makes plants grow better? Oxygenated soil. How interesting that once the plant grows above and spreads its leaves, it requires carbon dioxide. That's interesting. And when it takes in that carbon dioxide, it, 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 it excretes oxygen. How does that happen? That's amazing. It's a natural filter. Some things in nature must remain a mystery to the most intelligent and enterprising investigators. I say this, when science can figure out how to make a water molecule, I'll put my faith a little bit in science, but science can't do it. Oh, we can make a drop of water, but we can't make a water molecule. We can't bind two hydrogen and one oxygen molecules together. Human knowledge has bounds beyond which it cannot pass. There are some things we will not know, this side of heaven. Universal knowledge is for God alone. If this be so in the things which are seen and temporal, I may rest assured that it is even more so in matters spiritual and eternal. Like, I don't know, for example, the day the rapture is going to happen. These people keep trying to discover it. They will never discover it. It will never happen. Ever. Until it happens. Why then have I been tortured by brain with why then have I been torturing my brain with speculations as to destiny and will, fixed fate and human responsibility? These deep and dark truths I am no more able to comprehend than to find out the depths which couches beneath from which old ocean draws her watery stores. 
Do you know there can be a waterfall in the ocean underneath the waves? Go down deep, you can see it. Why am I so curious to know the reason of my Lord's providences, the motive of his actions, the design of his visitations? Shall I ever be able to clasp the sun in my fist and hold the universe in my palm? Yet these are as a drop of a bucket compared with the Lord my God. If you took all the oceans on the earth and put them in the palm of God's hand, it would barely make a moist spot. Let me not strive to understand the infinite. Let me not strive to understand the infinite, but spend my strength in love. What I cannot gain by intellect, I can possess by affection, and let that suffice me. I cannot penetrate the heart of the sea, but I can enjoy the healthful breezes which sweep over its bosom. And I can sail over its blue waves with propitious winds. If I could enter the springs of the sea, the feet would serve no useful purpose either to myself or to others. It would not save the sinking bark or give back the drowning or the drowned mariner to his weeping wife and children. Neither would my solving deep mysteries avail me a single wit for the least love to God. And the simplest act of obedience to him are better than the profoundest knowledge. This is why the Bible says, and I've, I've repeated it recently. If you know about the Lord, if you know about him crucified, you have the greatest knowledge there is above all other things. None of that stuff matters at all if you don't have the knowledge of Jesus Christ and him crucified. The gospel. My Lord, I leave the infinite to thee and pray thee to put far from me such a love for the tree of knowledge as might keep me from the tree of life. Interesting ending statement there. There are things we are never going to know. There are things we are never going to understand. Of all the processes in nature, in creation, all the ones we can measure, and there's hundreds of them, why is it there's only like, I think that they said like 11 or 16, somewhere around there, they have these certain processes that pertain specifically to life on this planet, why is it they never deviate, but they are static? They never move. And all the rest of them vary wildly because God controls it. Why do the trees in Rockport, Texas, because of the offshore winds, why do they grow? Why do the trees grow sideways? They grow leaning. And when you take their seeds, they never used to. When you take their seeds and plant them anywhere in the world, they grow leaning. Well, how, how is that possible? How did that tree so specifically learn that motion that it grows that way, even if you plant it somewhere else in the world? That's amazing. How does a whale know what another whale is saying across oceans? There's so many things we don't understand and we never will. But you know what? Sometimes we don't need to understand them. See, the person who pursues understanding all things takes away his ability to wonder. Because if you, if you learn it all, if you understand it all, there's no wonder to it. How do clouds work? I don't know. And I'm glad I don't know because when they form the most beautiful formations, it is a wonder to me. Why do the stars look the way they do? I don't know. But it is a wonder to me. Why is the star serious? Any, any attempts to film it? Why does it look like a bunch of squiggly lines in a, in a ball? Taking pictures, taking video, no matter what it is, that, that's what it looks like. It doesn't look like anything else. Why does it look like that? I don't know, but it's a wonder that it does. It's amazing. My mom used to think it was a UFO flying over her place. And I said, no, that's, that's stars called Sirius. That's, it always looked like that. I tried to take pictures of it and you can't. Even look through it through a spotting scope or a high powered rifle scope and it looks the same. You, you can't see the actual star. Why are the Pleiades blue? See, all these things, we don't know these things and that's okay. We don't need to know them because it gives us something to wonder about.
We don't have to know everything. We don't have to understand everything. Sometimes you just have to believe. I don't know how Jesus was able to do what he did on the cross and how that correlated into the spiritual realm, but I know he did it. That's enough. And it is a wonder to me how he was able to shed his blood on this earth. And spiritually, it, it referred to something vastly different, to pay the debt we owe for sin. That's amazing to me. How was Jesus as a spiritual being born as a human? That's a mystery to me. What were we before the world began that the Lord knew us so specifically? There are some things we just need to wonder about. We just need to not fully understand, but just enjoy them and enjoy the wonder of wanting to know about them. There are some mysteries that are best left undiscovered. Because sometimes if we knew them, it might be more horrible than what we realize. <laughs> Better not to know some things. Plausible deniability. <laughs> but people will always try to discover. They will always try to search out and always try to learn. Childlike faith sometimes doesn't learn or want to know what certain things are and how they work, but they just believe. I don't know how my mom and dad do the things they do, but I know they do it and I believe. Childlike faith. So childlike faith, at, at a certain point, just stops asking and says, I believe. Just stops wondering and being curious and getting frustrated with it and just says, I believe. I see it. I know it's real. I believe. I see you. I know you're real. I believe. Childlike faith. Some things discover. We go out, we find out what's going on, and it's a benefit. Some things, some things, it, it will not be a benefit. Like, for example, if you want a, a good example of the, of the other side of it. What if you knew every single person by their heart, and so you knew who was going to hell and who wouldn't? Would that be a benefit? What if you knew exactly who was saved and who wasn't? Would that be a benefit? What if you knew who was lost and who wasn't? Would that be a benefit? There are some things we just don't need to know, and it's better that we don't know them, because if we did, it would be a burden beyond our capability to carry. The Bible says, with great knowledge comes great sorrow. Ask Solomon, he knew, he experienced it firsthand. Vanity, vanity, all is vanity. Jesus said, if you can't make yourself uh, uh, 18 inches taller, a cubit taller, if you can't add one hour to your life, why do you worry about anything else? Don't worry about it. The Lord is in control. He runs the show. He's got everything perfectly dialed in. All we have to do is walk in it. That's it. It's that easy. Lord, give us that childlike faith. And the things that we don't know and we can't discover, Lord, make us to be rested in our heart concerning them. And just to trust and know that you've got it under control. You know what's going on. You are the one taking care of it all. And we just walk in the wonder of it. I wonder how that works. And you know what? I'm okay with wondering. Make us to believe, just believe. And to let the stuff go that is out of our control, let it go to you. Because if we learn everything, there's no wonder left. Lord, give, leave us some wonder. I know there are some things we just don't need to know. Because if we did know them, it might terrify us too much. Or we might stop paying attention to it. Or we might get bored with it. Who knows? We might stop glorifying you. Sometimes we need that wonder just so it gives us a reason to glorify you. So that it reminds us to glorify you. Lord, look what you did. I don't understand how it works. I don't understand how you do it. But it's amazing. I don't understand how the process works of somebody stepping across from this life to the next. But I've experienced the, this side of it escorting them to the veil and the Lord escorts them across. I don't know how it works. I don't know how the body keeps going on and winds down slowly after the spirit has left it, but I seen it, seen it two days ago, witnessed it with my own eyes, witnessed it twice. Lord, 
let's leave some things to wonder and never there's some things that aren't for us that are only for you never tell us those things until or unless the time is right let us wonder about them because it's more exciting and it's more interesting and it gives us even more to look forward to I put this in your hands and according to your will because I trust you and I trust your will you know better than the rest of us it is in your name that we pray and ask all these things amen Guys, thank you for joining me for Evening Devotion. Some things are best left alone. There are some places we just should not tread. I remember down there in um, some of the deepest parts of Africa, there's a, a, a big bunch of legends, and there's a lot of information about this out there. A lot of people say it's not real, but they said there's a, a, a dinosaur down there. I guess it's like a plesiosaur, but it's a little smaller. And uh, it lives in ca these big caves up next to the river. Um, even the hippos are scared of it. And they said it's big. And they even have killed a few. But they said there's quite a few of them down there. And a lot of people have gone down there. And there was one guy. He was a world-renowned photographer and expeditionist. And he went there. And it was all kinds of problems and everything. And they went down there. And he said, I got pictures of it. And I saw it with my own eyes. And I drew a map to get there. And I destroyed it all. And they're like, what would you do that for? And they actually tried to threaten him to have him take him there and tell him what he said there are some things in this world that are better left unknown there are some things we just don't need to know some good and some bad and some very bad better just leave it alone I had a friend a long time ago well he's a friend of a friend a buddy of mine's buddy of mine's friend. We were down swimming in a river and a couple people were like, I wonder how deep it is in this spot. It was up in Missouri years and years and years ago. And uh, the one guy over the following weekend decided he wanted to find out. What he didn't know was somebody had thrown a whole bunch of um, rolls of barbed wire down there and he got hung up in it and it drowned him. There are some things better left unknown. I can go on and on with those types of experiences. Well, what happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? There are sometimes you need to stand and look at it and go, you know what? I don't need to know what happens. Better that I don't. What's at the top of Mount Everest? Well, a whole lot of people died trying to find out. Sometimes it's just better left to leave it alone and just say, you know what? That's a pretty mountain. I'm good looking at it in pictures or at the base of it. I'm, I'm good. I don't need to go up there. Because a lot of people who who went and looked, found out, asked the American Indians. They still tell the legends way back when of the giants. You know, they start show you in the movies, they hold their hand up and say, how? Well, there's a reason why they hold that hand up. It's not what the movies tell you. They hold their hand up like that because they're counting their fingers because they said the giants that eat, eat people had six fingers. They hold their hand up so that they would respond with a greeting thinking they were saying hi, but they were really exposing who they really were. They counted six fingers, they took off. They said, we don't need to know who they are, where they came from. We told everybody, just stay away from them. There are some areas in this country that the American Indians still won't go to. Some things are better left just, I don't need to know about that, no, I'm good. We just trust the Lord. He'll reveal it all. All will be revealed. We'll just leave it alone. All will be revealed. Because if we can learn to do that, it garners a great deal of faith in us towards him. And it keeps the hope alive. I don't need to know how the rapture works. All these people talking about these dreams and visions and all this. I don't need to know. I don't need to know. I don't want to know. I don't need to know how it works. I'll find out soon enough. Either when I come back with everyone else that has gone on with the Lord, or if the Lord I'm alive and the Lord takes me. Either way, I'll find out. That's good enough for me. It's good enough for me. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.